play, you can sleepwalk through the character. And, um, you know, she wants to be more kind to things. I can tell you this show is not being renewed. That much I already know. I already okay. checked on it. They, 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 they said it was more likely that Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States than the humorless uh, show men with a certain age would get a pickup for a third season. Oh. Yeah. So that's that was what I read on the thing. So. But they're trying to go for Emmy nominations. Yeah, you know, it got an Emmy's award for uh, and, and nominated for Andre Bauer, which is funny because you know that he would be uh, the likely person that did win the Emmy's award for uh, you know, and the Writers Guild of America was nominated for the Writers Guild, nominated for a Young Artist Award for you know Brittany Curran, so. But, oh, she was? It's yeah. good for her. But, it, you know, it, it basically won an Emmy's Award. And, uh, well, actually, probably because of Andrea Bauer is actually... Bauer is the lead, folks. It isn't Romano. It is Andrea Bauer. Oh, yeah, when you think... Of, but it, it has not listed as Best Supporting Actor. I know, but he is actually the lead. He watched the show. He it, it's, it's built around That's him. That's true, it is. Yeah. Hmm. He's the only stable person in the entire show, and he's got an unstable... He's, Okay. Uh, He's got a father. I know. I'm, I'm going to try to be. That's unclean. prodding him. I, I'm going to be try to. I'm going to try to do this in a professional manner. He's got an automobile dealership that just happens to be ran by the president of the United States. And he's a black American. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, it's one of those. It's not a Ford dealership. Ford dealership is doing good. His dealership isn't doing good. Mm -hmm. So I mean, here's a question. Why in the world would Romano pick out a car dealership to have uh, the situate the story situated around? Sponsor dealer, sponsor dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah, the product placement, product placement. Shall we say a yogurt company was ever predominantly mentioned in that episode? Refrigerators full of stuff. Oh, can you get this? Oh yeah, I'm certain that they got it. Well, can you call and see if they've got it? Okay, I'll call. So. Mm -hmm. You but know. see, part of it is the two people that were there were Ray Romano and Mike Royce. Uh -huh. So typically, if they're going to be there at the Q and A, you would think that they would be up for the Emmy nomination. That's my guess. Right. I would guess they're going to nominate Bauer because Bauer is a person that's easily nominated. But he wasn't there. No, but, he, I, but neither Baluka because of family issues. But they were um, previously the Writers Guild um, of America Award 2011. They were nominated yeah. for writing. That's right. That was for last year. Well, because okay. Well, that's 2011. This is this. That's right. This, this is um, this is for this year for last year. So. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, you know, same as the 2011 nominations for the the thing. So Which, maybe they're going for an Emmy for. They're um, going for writing. multiple Emmys. He needs the Emmys to keep the show going. What happens is. Well, is right now it's not renewed. Well, maybe they could pick it up if it gets nominated. It, we get, no, if it gets, if it, it's going to have to win something to make it the next time. But no, I mean, it's, it's okay, watch, watch TNT. TNT tends to bring you a lot of schlock entertainment. You know, they hire big names to do material that they would never do on broadcast television. You know, because, because of the, the subject nature? Well, it, it, because it's too cheap. There's no budget on these shows. I mean, um, HBO has budgets, but HBO is only doing a, you know, HBO will throw, um, you know, they'll throw every major actor in the world at you. You know, a Showtime will show, throw every major actor that they well, can at you. Other than those specialty shows, a lot of it are just reruns of movies. That's right. You know, so. And they're a premium network, so they can pick up more bucks, but um, the, what happens is on, on on basic cable, which TNT is, um, or Turner or T, or what is it? Turner Classic. Turner Classic. So that's T. There's also Turner TCM. Network Television. Then there's TC. Uh, no, there's the other one. TBS Turner Broadcasting. Uh, or, um, or or you've got like uh, Fox, you know, you know their, their thing, and all these you know TV land. They've all they've got minuscule budgets. Basically, they got people working on budgets that are non. -ex Basically, they used to get paid more than the budget of the show they're working on. Mm. So, and they're cutting corners everywhere you can cut corners. I mean, cheap is cheap. 
I wouldn't, I mean... Well, but part of it is they're doing a TV show, right? They're not doing they know. a movie that's meant to be on the big screen. And so we're watching a show that was intended for the television set on a big movie screen. One camera. One camera. I, would, I never worked on a show in my life that didn't have two cameras, at least. Mm. And we didn't have a lot of money to work on a lot of things. I mean, I worked on some... You know, some pictures, the basic motion pictures that had, they basically, you know, beg, borrow, and stole to get that second camera because it cuts down production time. Mm -hmm. One camera means you have to multiple production time. Are you stag, you're, you put people in a static position, hence the reason to go have their dinners. Because, because can, you're in one spot. And if they want to do something, I just take the camera, they can, you know, they, you know, basically you can walk around because they're in one spot. Or you can basically, when they cut to a commercial, they can take the camera outside and shoot through the window and get all of this there. Mm -hmm. They're actually on location when they're doing this, folks. It's not studio, it's location. Oh, really? Yeah, but there's no lights. Oh, yeah. They're working with available lights. Sound is crappy. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm supposed to be here to do the professional side. She basically, I'm going to get, a, I'm going to get critiqued over my critique. I, I, I got. See, I, because he he knows more of the professional side. I look at it from a totally different aspect, which is just entertainment. Yeah, basically, <laughs> I got uh, I got flack from a person sitting next to me when I said it's a cheap ass production, and you know he didn't like that statement. And then he find out it's a cheap ass production. So yeah. And then, of course, afterwards, I was sitting there talking to them, and I didn't realize he had said that, so then they asked me for my card. So they probably wanted to know who in the world we were and how did we know all that stuff, which is typically what happens. Uh, my family has been in this business since 1910. This happens to be 2011, folks. Mm -hmm. That's a, a long time. So he notices things a lot differently than I do. I'm looking up, going, you know, I'm just looking at it from an... In, you know, entertainment perspective. And I looked at it from okay. The, um, and there uh, were there were lots of cl cliches. It was very predictable, but you know, it's one of those things that you know. No, but if you not, like watching Ray Romano. You like watching Scott Belocca or Bacula or Andre Bauer. Yeah, but you I can you tell you, the one thing that that guys going through midlife crises is don't want to see is a show about people going through a midlife crisis. Well, I thought part of the perspective on those shows was so that you could watch somebody that's in a worse situation than you are and then you could feel better. They, and then they, maybe learn from you, it so you avoid they don't, those things. Why it's doing bad is because they're, uh, they're, they don't have that audience. That audience doesn't want to watch a downer. Okay. Oh, and, and then the other people don't care about watching it. Here's another thing. Uh, what people don't understand is that uh, after Jimmy Carter, Dynasty, yeah. uh, Dallas, the sh uh, lifestyles of the rich and famous, uppers always do well in a bad economy. So you give them a downer show in a bad economy and people won't watch it. Uh, I mean, although I was watching something the other day and they said, well, you want to improve ratings, just throw on a vampire. Yeah, or you know, <laughs> with the vampire. I mean, we're talking... To, the cliched thing with the vampire thing is, is is young male models, all with shaved chest and all with abs, yeah, no, and and little and, and and girls that look like they're barely out of their teens if they're that old. That's that's the that's the new trend, which is bad, but no, but um, there are things you don't do, such as in a, in a down economy, we don't build a home. If you're in a real estate business, you don't start a thousand track homes. No. Yeah. Uh, if you're in the industrial business, you don't build a brand new factory. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're built, if you're in the uh, retail business, you don't build new shopping centers. Mm -hmm. There are things you don't do in the entertainment business. You don't do downer shows in a down situation. But if you're doing Jewish comedy, first you have to understand <laughs> the old style. Um, you know, Jewish theater is probably an up comedy. It's up, you know, my God. You think so, is it? it, it probably. Oh. I mean, most of the people would probably think, you know, um, Romeo and Juliet was an upper. You know, or, or Medea was an upper. You know, or, you know, Greek tragedies would be full of jocular humor to the Jewish comic. So, so the, he may not actually think, he may not know that this that is not funny. Well, I think, a lot yeah. of people from the audience asked him about that. Of course, 
Of course, I did notice that the questions were about why the movie, why it was such a downer. But then I did also notice them say that, well, that was the only episode that they'd ever watched. Yeah, but... but and the two people that made a comment about it said that was the only episode they've ever watched. And the reason they've only watched it is because the, it's a downer. I mean, okay, we, are, we got to flat out tell you. He said that you people are here to see the funny episode. Mm -hmm. The funny episode, which was a downer. So part of it is if you're frustrated with your life and you're going through a midlife crisis, and you want to see men go through a midlife crisis, that's the show for you. Or if you're if, if you're a woman and you want to see men, you know... Men and what they go through in their midlife crisis? And then you might find the humor in it, so the guys that's don't true. find the humors. And, and, and I, I will guarantee you, as a male, no one is going to believe that a guy, you know, that looks like Scott Gottka basically has a problem. Well, you know, part of it is, I don't know what the demographics looks like this, but my guess is it's bad. the demographics of people that actually watch this are probably similar to the audience that they don't want to pay any attention to when they do ratings. Yeah. Not, yeah. yeah which would be my guess, because okay. they're trying to go, what, for they, the, what, they, the 18 to 30 year olds? They had, um, they, they, they lost 50% of that audience also. The audience primarily, as I understand, is people my age. Mm -hmm. You know, people the age of Robert Loggia. Oh, it's like, remember when we were doing that? Yeah, I could, hey, you know, hey, look what you got to look forward to, kid. You know, basically, like, you know, I, I you know, I, I can look back at that now and laugh because look at me, I've, I've got a hot new 60-year-old girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, but uh, um, the audience that they're looking for doesn't watch television. They do not watch television. It's just um, um, sometimes we get far afield. But I was there when 